Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great, and you? Please, can you kindly introduce yourself to us? Wow, wow, wow. I'm Dr. Favo Okui. I am currently a medical officer, currently serving the Cardiovascular Research Institute, University of Abuja. Where did you have your undergraduate training? Actually, I did my undergraduate training at Nambazuku University, College of Health Science, Nairi, at Inizi, Anambra State. Okay. Would it be possible for us to have the rest of the interview inside? Of course, you can come inside. All right, thank, thank you. you very much. Sure. You're welcome to my humble approach. Thank you. You can have a seat. Thank you. So, Dr. Favor, you said, right? Yeah. Okay, so we have a couple of questions for you today. All right. Um, most of the audience will be house officers, medical students, and some of these questions will interest them. So, we want very clear, succinct, and also very sincere responses. All right. Thank okay. you so much. So, the first question looking at Nigeria's current situation, would you advise someone to engage in the NYC program? Yes, I will, because the NYC program, which is National Youth Service Scheme, is beyond just you trying to have another year of work. There is an, an aim to that, and that is to build your patriotism to your country, despite the ill condition of the country right now. So I would I say it's very something wonderful. I would advise everyone to do, but because of the current situation in the country, you have to be more careful now. Where you go, the state you are serving in, you have to put in the security conditions, and of course, it's another one year of planning for the next phase of your life. So it's something everyone should do. I advise everyone to do it. What should be the plan of potential medical officers who wants to do the NYC? financially and also having time for personal development okay your plan should be this one year in addition to your previous year as an intern as an house officer is a time of first personal development and is a time of first secondly planning for what next what lies ahead i tell people that when you plan for nyc you don't start planning it inside the nyc you start doing your house job you start planning how much do you want to begin doing your nyc what and what do you want to learn during your NYC. NYC is an opportunity to develop the foundation of your life because it is the projection of how your life will be when you are done during residency or outside residency. So if you are going to go into business, you want to go into other aspects of life, even if you want to leave medicine totally, it is during your NYC that those projections, those plans you have are solidified and you begin the next phase after NYC. What options are available for medical officers aside from core clinical practice and how can they get them? All right. If you want to do your NYC and you don't want to do core clinical services, there are a lot of options open for you. Number one, you can work in your research institute, and this is what you need to do during your house job. You check online what are the research institutes available in your teaching hospital or in other teaching hospitals or universities outside the place you're currently working or doing your internship or you school it. The second one is there are some other research institutes outside um, within the country in Abuja, Lagos, and some other states in the country that offer people doctors work and then you can do your service in there you request you go there they employ you you work for them then you ask them to request specifically from for you from the national the nyc board and they will be posted directly to them so all this depends on your plan if you can work in a research institute you can also run your own business now what would that require from you to require from you working in a place that won't be so hectic for you where you can just work once a week come to work once a week or you are less burdened so you have time to do other things. You can also work in another company. You mustn't work in a health institution. You mustn't even do a work so closely related to health. You can use that as an opportunity to develop other things. The major thing is that you are assigned to a PPA and you did your NYC. So that's the basic part of it. Okay. What are the other practical ways in this climb that young doctors can make money during housemanship and national youth service? Program? All right. Thank you so much for the question. Actually, I see um, doing housemanship is a very critical period because that moment you don't really own yourself the hospital tends to own you you tend to do your 24 7 within the hospital space and everything and so um, accommodation provisions are made for you within the hospital so if you want to do other two ways of getting money you need to do something that doesn't take you away from the hospital so there is a crypto is the best time to learn crypto invest those money you are getting into crypto your 10,000 20,000 30,000 learn how to do crypto learn how to do the the buying the tradings, the future tradings and things like that is a sure way of gaining solid foundation on that. Secondly, you can do Forex. You can learn Forex. That's a very good way of learning how to make money outside medicine that doesn't require your presence. There is something you do online. Secondly, there are a lot of skills you can do like if you can do creative design, if you can do video editing, if you can do a podcast, if you have a content creating in your online platforms, your social media platforms and things. These are things you can do during your youth service, during your internship and your youth service that doesn't take you away from the hospital you can also do a 
you being a mediator in buying things, maybe selling cars, doing things, something that doesn't take you away from the hospital. Nevertheless, if you're someone that have had an organized, structured business, that you have people doing things for you or you have automated your business, then you can continue with it during house job, during your NYSC, and you make sure you scale it up to a new level. But if you want to make extra money during your house job and your NYSC, look for things that won't take you away from the hospital so that you develop enough clinical skills and enough things because it may be the last point of contact you have with the hospital, with medicine, with patients. So make sure you utilize it effectively and make sure you learn the best of it all. All right. As you complete your NYC program, what is the one most significant professional milestone you've achieved during this period? Well, for me, um, as I've completed my NYC program, one of the things I think I learned in it was, as I said, I work in a research institution institute and I learned a lot how to deal with the foreign bodies with respect to clinical research. I tend to see what they are looking for, what they when they call for papers, when they are looking for people to give grants to, I began to look at their objectives, what their focus is, and it helped me a lot in learning, developing those aspects of my skills. I also learned how to write papers, how to write clinical thesis and things like that. Second thing I also did is that it was an opportunity for me to also develop myself. Uh, but with respect to the profession, I perfected so many of the skills I had, my surgical skills, my ability to cannulate. I love cannulation a lot, femoral cannulation, chest cannulation, that is nephrology. And it was a very wonderful point time to um, practicalize it and become best at doing it. And of course, I had my old time. I didn't do night shift, so my night was a very much important time for me to perfect and learn other things outside medicine. Thank you. Reflecting on your time as a medical officer, what is the most one most significant challenge you faced? Well, as a medical officer, that is from my point of internship to this point, one of the most um, point of challenge I faced was trying to define myself. Because sometimes in the job, you're trying to define what do you really want? Because you have a desire that, okay, this is the field I want to do. And then you're coming into the practice and it's looking totally different. So trying to define myself, trying to choose what do I actually like was one of the things I faced in the course of my medical office officer period, especially post-graduating from medical school. The second thing I faced was trying to know how to rapport well with my senior colleagues and people at some enviable platforms because at this moment, at this point in time, it seemed as if we are now colleagues, but needed to know how to become like them, give them the respect and also be able to bear whatever, they have some college insults or whatever they give to you. Being able to stand on my ground, stand on my position, and be able to say, this is what I want, this is what I don't want. That was another second thing I faced in the point of my medical officer period up to this moment. Then the last thing I think I faced was trying to learn the skills. We grew up in the Nigerian school system, education system. We know how things are done. A lot of things are not yet done effectively as a student. We have been on that world. So coming into the as internship period as a medical officer they expect you to not to calculate how to do this how to do this and it wasn't easy trying to learn those things as an house officer which is not much house officers when i started i was the only house officer in my unit so a lot was expected of me so i had to learn at a quick pace and i had to give it my all but thank god it was worth it i did my best and it was worth it all right so how should young doctors handle the pressure of not giving into what other people are doing with the current Jaffa wave and deciding to stay in the country and all that, in maybe one sentence, what's the solution for those who are confused and are not sure what they want? Uh, the solution for me would be discover yourself. Know what you want. You are different from others. Think back, think deep, and ask yourself, what is it that gives you joy? What do you want to be in the next 10 years? How will you do it? How will you get to it? And number two, don't see medicine as something you will do for the rest of your life. Let medicine be like a side also to you. The major thing, your main also should be yourself and your personal development. Out of it flows medicine, business, church, your religion, or whatever. So you should focus on developing yourself and develop other streams that flows from you. Like medicine is a stream. You won't be a medical doctor forever. At one point, you may want to diversify. So what if you diversify? Will all your life be centered in medicine alone? No. So you should look at developing yourself, what you want. It will help you to make definite decisions whether okay you want to settle in nigeria now to do some basic things or you want to travel out so don't just travel out because others are traveling out no travel out because that is what is needed for you to become who you want to be like currently now i'm not in the verge of traveling out it doesn't so much disturb me but at the moment apart from the medicine i currently am a co-founder of a of a health tech company and we are seriously working so much into it and a lot is being done by that a lot a lot funding a lot of that Second, we have other companies that I own and I'm setting into motion this year. And so I can't just leave them and say, well, I want to travel because others are traveling. No, 
has their own purpose, has their own plan. I've got my own plan and I have to stay and work it out till it becomes manifested. The major thing is that you are growing. The major thing is that there is an evidence that you, of course, increased. So when those are traveled out, come back and say, this and this is what I did. You yourself will be able to say, I stayed in Nigeria and this is the evidence of my staying here. This and this is what I learned. But if you feel that the culture, the environment is not favoring you and you feel that the best thing is for you to jab, no problem. The ball is in your court. But make sure you are not going against your purpose. You are in line with what God wants you to be and what you want to be in the next 10 years. Thank you. So how much do most doctors earn during their service year, in particular, NYSC? And how much do you earn currently? I know that's a personal question now, but please kindly share with us. Okay. All right. I think for here uh, in Abuja currently, most doctors tend to earn within 70, 80,000 to above 100, 150,000, depending on the hospital or where they are working at, actually. So in other parts of the country, tends to end and more because you do other looking jobs and what have you. But if it's basically on the salary paid to you by your PPA, your place of primary assignment, I'm not seeing a place that is over 200 or over 150. It's between 70 to 150. So people now cover it up with looking jobs and things like that. So that is one. Then currently for me, how much I earn? All I would say is that I earn far more than I did when I was an ass officer. Yeah, because of the protocol by which I got my service and I worked in a research institute. And I don't do locum actually, but we'll get to that later on. But just by PPA and the salary um, packages involved in it is much more than what I earned in my house job. And I started doing house job to work towards it. And thank God it clicked and went the way I wanted. So what's your advice to potential medical officers now, both um, those currently doing their house job, those who are done with house job and they are looking forward to begin their NYC program? What's the one single advice that you have for them? Well, my one single advice is start early to plan where you want to do it. Because in planning for that, you would like to get where we give you the opportunity to become what you want to be, who you want to be. Because that one year of NYC is a basic time to learn and become better. But if some of you are not privileged enough to get it because you don't have someone to ensure that you are posted where you want to be, or like some others are paying money and it doesn't work out because you're a doctor and doctors cannot be moved anyhow, wherever you are posted, make up your mind to make the, be the best there, to make the best opportunity out of it. And if you cannot be relocated to your preferred position, make up your, your mind that those 12 months you will spend there will be the best for you and you're going to be better than you were when you came there. The environment may not be conducive the salary may not be conducive, but as long as your security is not threatened, your life is not threatened, make the best out of it. Okay. And then finally, what's next for Dr. Favor? Business, personal projects, marriage, residency, postgraduate training? Really? What's next? We're curious. We want to know. Okay. Thank you so much. Those some of it is quite a personal question. Um, personal question. But I will say, um, at the moment, I'm not Japarin. I'm staying in Nigeria. Then because I want to diversify, as I told you, I already have plans and real companies and working with a lot of co-founding and a lot of things. How we do my business, yes, the business sounds and everything. And one more thing is I also do residency in radiology specifically so right. that beyond giving me the opportunity to do other things, that's one thing I'm interested in doing because I want to sub-specialize in interventional radiology and also go to the future of medicine. The future of medicine is technology. The future of medicine is robotics. The future of medicine is genetic, trying to work with the minute things to produce great results. So we want to know how do we get these diseases early? How do we capture these things in the, as the baby is inside the mother's womb? How do we do this and do it in Nigeria? So I want to take the Nigeria health system to the best level it could be. And that will only come when we have given ourselves to the training and we come back and we make Nigeria the best that we want it to be. So, All right, Dr. Favor, any passing words? Well, I would say actually in parting that medicine is wonderful. I know because of the current condition of the country and the world at large, it seems as if not to be financial, so financially beneficial to many, but think out of the box. Ask yourself, what can you do? The medicine you have studied. Ask yourself, what new thing can you bring into the world of medicine? What new thing can you develop? How can you make this world of medicine more accessible to the patients in the interiors even in the urban areas even to the global audience and when you begin to think that way you discover new ways to use the gift of medicine the talents and the skills you have learned to reach out to your world and be the best in it thank you so much all right thank you very much Dr. Favor. it was a so pleasure much. doing this with it was you. a pleasure meeting. until next time yes